The Prodigies of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Series 2. Volume 8, April 5, 1908. All that the Queen Mama contains has its origin in the fiat. Continuing in my usual state, I found myself outside of myself, within a garden, in which I could see the Queen Mama placed on a very high throne. I yearned to go up there to kiss her hand, and as I tried to go, she came to meet me, giving me a smacking kiss on my face. In looking at her, I saw as though a globe of light in her interior, and within that light, there was the word fiat. From that word descended many different unending seas of virtues, graces, greatnesses, glory, joys, beauties, and everything that our Queen Mama contains as a whole. Everything was rooted in that fiat, and all of her goods took their origin from the fiat. How omnipotent, fecund, holy fiat! Who can comprehend you? I feel mute. It is so great that I can say nothing. Therefore I stop here. So I looked at her with amazement, and she said to me, My daughter, all of my sanctity came out from within the word fiat. I did not move even for one breath, one step, one action, or anything at all, if not within the will of God. My life, my food, my all, was the will of God. And this produced such sanctity, riches, glories, honors for me, not human, but divine. So the more the soul is united, identified with the will of God, the more she can be called holy, and she is loved more by God. And the more she is loved, the more she is favored, because her life is nothing but the product of the will of God. How can he not love her if she is his own thing? Therefore one must not look at how much or how little he does, but rather at whether it is wanted by God. In fact, the Lord looks more at something little, if it is according to his will, than at something great without it. Volume 8, December 27, 1908 What passed between baby Jesus and his sweet mamma when she would feed him from her breast. The I love you of the creature is requited by the I love you of the creator. I was meditating on when the Queen Mama would give her milk to baby Jesus. I was saying to myself, what must have passed between the Most Holy Mama and little Jesus in this act? At that moment, I felt him move in my interior, and I heard him say to me, My daughter, when I suckled milk from the breast of my most sweet mother, together with milk I suckled the love of her heart, and it was more love than milk that I suckled. While suckling I would hear her say to me, I love you, I love you, O son. And I would repeat to her, I love you, I love you, O mamma. And I was not alone in this. At my I love you, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the whole of creation, the angels, the saints, the stars, the sun, the drops of water, the plants, the flowers, the grains of sand, all of the elements, would run after my I love you and repeat, We love you, we love you, O Mother of our God, in the love of our Creator. My mother could see all this and would remain inundated. 
She could not even find a tiny space in which she would not hear me say that I loved her. Her love would remain behind and almost alone, and she would repeat, I love you, I love you. But she could never match me, because the love of a creature has its limits, its time, while my love is uncreated, unending, eternal. The same happens to any soul when she says to me, I love you. I too repeat to her, I love you. And with me is the whole creation, loving her in my love. Oh, if creatures comprehended what good and honor they procure for themselves, even by just saying to me, I love you. Volume 11, May 9, 1913 Jesus and his mamma are inseparable. How she carried out her office of mother. While praying, I was thinking about that moment in which Jesus took leave of his most holy mother to go and suffer his passion. And I said to myself, How is it possible that Jesus could separate from his dear mamma? and she from Jesus? And blessed Jesus told me, My daughter, surely there could not be separation between me and my sweet mamma. The separation was only apparent. She and I were fused together, and the fusion was such and so great that I remained with her, and she came with me. So it can be said that there was a sort of bilocation this happens also to souls when they are truly united with me, and if while praying they let prayer enter into their souls as life, a sort of fusion and bilocation occurs. I bring them with me wherever I am, and I remain with them. My daughter, you cannot comprehend well what my beloved mamma was for me. In coming upon earth, I could not be without heaven, and my heaven was my mamma. There was such electricity running between me and her that not one thought escaped her which she could not draw from my mind. And this drawing from me of word, will, desire, action, step, in sum, of everything, formed the sun, the stars, the moon in this heaven, together with all possible delights that a creature can give me, and that she herself can enjoy. Oh, how I delighted in this heaven! Oh, how I felt cheered and repaid for everything! Even the kisses that my mamma gave me enclosed the kiss of all humanity, returning to me the kiss of all creatures. I felt my sweet mamma everywhere. I felt her in my breath, and if it was labored, she would relieve it. I felt her in my heart, and if it was embittered, she would sweeten it. I felt her in my step, and if it was tired, she would give me vigor and rest. And who can tell you how I felt her in my passion? At each lash at each thorn, at each wound, at each drop of my blood. I felt her everywhere, carrying out the office of my true mother. Ah, if souls reciprocated me, if they drew everything from me, how many heavens and how many mothers would I have on earth? Volume 12, November 28, 1920 when Jesus wants to give, he asks. Effects of the Blessing of Jesus I was thinking of when my sweet Jesus, to give start to his sorrowful passion, wanted to go to his mamma to ask for her blessing. And blessed Jesus told me, My daughter, how many things this mystery reveals! I wanted to go to my dear mamma to ask for her blessing, 
in order to give her the occasion to ask, herself too, for my blessing. Too many were the pains that she was to bear, and it was right that my blessing would strengthen her. It is my usual way that whenever I want to give, I ask. And my mamma understood me immediately, so much so that she did not bless me before she asked me for my blessing. And after she was blessed by me, she blessed me herself. But this is not all. In order to create the universe, I pronounced one fiat, and by the fiat alone, I reordered and embellished heaven and earth. In creating man, my omnipotent breath infused life in him. In giving start to my passion, with my omnipotent and creative word, I wanted to bless my mamma. But it was not her alone that I blessed. In my mamma I saw all creatures. She was the one who had primacy over everything, and in her I blessed all and each one. Even more, I blessed each thought, word, act, and so forth. I blessed each thing that was to serve the creature. Just as when my omnipotent fiat created the sun, and this sun, without decreasing in light or in heat, keeps following its course for all and for each of the mortals, in the same way, my creative word in blessing, remained in the act of blessing always, always, without ever ceasing to bless, just as the sun shall never cease to give its light to all creatures. But this is not all yet. With my blessing I wanted to renew the qualities of creation. I wanted to call my celestial father to bless, in order to communicate power to the creature. I wanted to bless her in my name, and of the Holy Spirit, in order to communicate to her wisdom and love, and therefore renew the memory, the intellect, and the will of the creature, restoring her as sovereign of everything. Know, however, that in giving, I want, and my dear mamma understood and she immediately blessed me, not only for herself, but in the name of all. Oh, if all could see this blessing of mine, they would feel it in the water they drink, in the fire that warms them, in the food they take, in the sorrow that afflicts them, in the moans of prayer, in the remorses of guilt, in the abandonment of creatures, in everything, they would hear my creative word saying to them, but unfortunately it is not heard. I bless you in the name of the Father, of myself, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I bless you to help you. I bless you to defend you, to forgive you, to console you. I bless you to make you a saint, and the creature would echo my blessings by blessing me too in everything. These are the effects of my blessing, and my church instructed by me echoes me, and in almost all circumstances, in the administration of the sacraments and others, she gives her blessing. Volume 12, December 18, 1920 Requital of love and of thanksgiving for all that God operated in the celestial mamma. I was all afflicted without my Jesus, and while I was praying, I felt him near me, saying to me, Ah, my daughter, things get worse. It shall enter like whirlwind to shake everything. It shall rain for the time of a whirlwind and it shall end as the whirlwind ends. 
The Italian government lacks the ground under its feet and does not know where to turn to. Justice of God. After this I felt I was outside of myself, and I found myself together with my sweet Jesus, but so clasped with him, and he with me, that I almost could not see his divine person. And I, I don't know how, said, My sweet Jesus, while I am clasped to you, I want to attest to you my love, my gratitude, and everything that the creature has the duty to do, because you have created our immaculate Queen Mamma, the most beautiful, the holiest, and a portent of grace, enriching her with all gifts, and making her also our mother. And this I do in the name of creatures, past, present, and future. I want to seize, in flight, each act of creature, word, thought, heartbeat, and step, and in each of them tell you that I love you, I thank you, I bless you, I adore you for all that you have done for my celestial mamma and yours. Jesus enjoyed my act, but so much that he said to me, My daughter, I was anxiously awaiting this act of yours in the name of all generations. My justice, my love, felt the need of this requital, because great are the graces that descend upon all for having so enriched my mamma. Yet they never have a word, a thank you, to say to me. Volume 12, January 10, 1921 The Fiat Mihi of the Most Holy Virgin God wants a second yes in his will, the Fiat of Louisa. I was concerned about what is written above, and was saying to myself, I don't know what Jesus wants for me, yet he knows how bad I am, and how I am good at nothing. And Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, remember that years ago I asked you whether you wanted to live life in my will, and since I wanted you in my will, I wanted you to pronounce your yes in my own will. This yes was bound to an eternal point and to a will that shall have no end. This yes is in the center of my volition and is surrounded by infinite immensity. And if it wants to get out, it almost cannot find the way. Therefore, at your little oppositions, at some discontent of yours, I laugh and I amuse myself, seeing you like those people who are bound of their own will in the depth of the sea, and wanting to get out, they find nothing but water. And since they are bound in the depth of the sea, they feel the bother of wanting to get out. And in order to remain tranquil and happy, they plunge themselves even more into the depths of the sea. In the same way, in seeing you perplexed, as though wanting to get out, and unable to do so, bound by your own yes, you plunge yourself even more into the depths of my will. I laugh and I amuse myself. And then do you think it is something trivial and easy to move from within my will? You would move an eternal point. And if you knew what it means... To move an eternal point, you would tremble with fright. Then he added, The first yes in my fiat I asked of my dear mamma, and, oh, power of her fiat in my will, as soon as the divine fiat met with the fiat of my mamma, the two became one. My fiat raised her, divinized her, overshadowed her, and without human intervention, she conceived me, son of God. Only in my fiat could she conceive me. My fiat communicated to her the immensity, the infinity, 
the fecundity in a divine manner. And this is why the immense, the eternal, the infinite one could be conceived in her. As soon as she said, Fiat mihi, not only did she take possession of me, but she overshadowed all creatures, all created things together. She felt all the lives of creatures within herself. And from that moment, she began to act as mother and queen of all. How many portents does this yes of my mamma not contain? If I wanted to tell them all, you would never finish hearing them. Now, a second yes in my will I asked of you, and you, though trembling, pronounced it. This yes in my volition shall have its portents. It shall have a divine fulfillment. You, follow me and sink deeper into the sea of my will, and I shall take care of everything. My mamma did not think about how I would get to conceive myself in her. She only said, Fiat mihi, and I took care of the way in which to be conceived. So you shall do. Volume 12, January 17, 1921 the fiat mihi of the Most Holy Virgin had the same power of the creative fiat. The third fiat shall be the fulfillment and completion of the prayer taught by Jesus, the fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. I felt my poor mind immersed in the sea of the divine volition. Everywhere I could see the imprint of the fiat. I saw it in the sun, and it seemed to me that the echo of the fiat in the sun brought me the divine love that darts through me, that wounds me, that flashes through me. And I, on the wings of the fiat of the sun, rose up to the Eternal One, and brought, in the name of the whole human family, the love that darted through the Supreme Majesty, that wounded Him that flashed through him. And I said, In your fiat you gave me all this love, and only in the fiat can I return it to you. I looked at the stars, and I could see the fiat in them, and in their sweet and meek twinkling, this fiat brought me the pacific love, the sweet love, the hidden love the compassionate love in the very night of sin. And I, in the fiat of the stars, brought to the throne of the Eternal One, in the name of all, the Pacific love, in order to put peace between heaven and earth, the sweet love of the loving souls, the hidden love of many others, the love of the creatures when, after sin, they return to God. But who can say all that I understood and did in so many fiats with which I saw all creation strewn? I would be too long. Therefore I stop here. Then my sweet Jesus took my hands in his, and clasping them tightly, he told me, My daughter, the fiat is all full of life. Even more it is life itself and therefore all lives and all things come out from within the fiat. From my fiat, creation came out. Therefore in each created thing, one can see the imprint of the fiat. From the fiat mihi of my dear mamma, pronounced in my volition, having the same power of my creative fiat, redemption came out. So there is nothing in redemption which does not contain the imprint of the fiat mihi of my mamma. Even my very humanity, my steps, the works, the words, were sealed by her fiat mihi. My pains, the wounds, the thorns, the cross, my blood, had the imprint of her fiat mihi because things carry the imprint of the origin from which they came out. 
My origin in time was the fiat mihi of the Immaculate Mama. Therefore, all my operating carries the mark of her fiat mihi. So in each sacramental host, there is her fiat mihi. If man rises from sin, if the newborn is baptized, if heaven opens to receive souls, it is the fiat mihi of my mama that marks, that follows everything, and from it everything proceeds. O power of the fiat, it rises at each instant, it multiplies, and it makes itself life of all goods. Now I want to tell you, Louisa, why I asked for your fiat, your yes in my will. I want my prayer that was taught, the fiat voluntas tua, sicud in cello et in terra, this prayer of so many centuries, of so many generations, to have its fulfillment and completion. This is why I wanted another yes in my will, another fiat containing the creative power. I want the fiat that rises at each instant, that multiplies for all. I want in one soul my same fiat, which rises to my throne, and with its creative power, brings upon earth the life of the fiat on earth as it is in heaven. Surprised and annihilated in hearing this, I said, Jesus, what are you saying? And yet you know how bad I am and incapable of anything. And he, my daughter, it is my usual way to choose the most abject, incapable, and poor souls for my greatest works. My very mamma had nothing extraordinary in her exterior life, no miracles, not a sign that would make her be distinguished from other women. Her only distinction was perfect virtue, to which almost no one paid attention. And if to other saints I gave the distinction of miracles, and others I adorned with my wounds, to my mamma nothing, nothing. Yet she was the portent of portents, the miracle of miracles, the true and perfect crucified, no one else like her. I usually act like a master who has two servants. One seems a giant, Herculean, capable of everything. The other one, small, short, incapable, seems to be good at nothing, not an important service. If the master keeps him, it is more out of charity, and also for his amusement. Now, having to send a million, a billion to another country, what does he do? He calls the little one, the incapable one, and entrusts the great sum to him, saying to himself, If I entrust it to the giant, all shall fix their attention on him. Thieves shall assail him. They may rob him. And if he defends himself with his Herculean strength, he may remain wounded. I know that he is capable, but I want to spare him. I do not want to expose him to the obvious danger. On the other hand, this little one, knowing him to be incapable, no one shall pay attention to him. No one would think that I might entrust such an important sum to him, and so he shall come back safe and sound. The poor, incapable one is surprised that the master would trust him when he could use the giant, and all trembling and humble, he goes to deposit the great sum with no one deigning to look at him, and safe and sound he returns to his master, more trembling and humble than before. So I do. The greater the work I want to do, the more I choose abject, poor, ignorant souls, 
with no exteriority that might draw attention upon them. The abject state of the soul shall serve as safe custody for my work. The thieves of self-esteem, of love of self, shall not pay attention to her, knowing her inability. And she, humble and trembling, shall carry out the office entrusted by me, knowing that, not herself, but I myself did everything in her. Volume 12, January 24th, 1921. The third fiat shall bring to completion the glory and the honor of the fiat of creation, and shall be confirmation and development of the fruits of the fiat of redemption. These three fiats shall veil the most holy trinity upon earth, I was feeling annihilated in thinking about this blessed fiat, but my lovable Jesus wanted to increase my bewilderment. It seems that he wants to make fun of me, proposing to me astounding things and almost incredible, taking pleasure in seeing me overwhelmed and more annihilated. And what is worse, I am forced to write them by obedience to my greater torment. So while I was praying, my sweet Jesus leaned his head against mine, sustaining his forehead with his hand, and a light coming from his forehead told me, My daughter, the first fiat was pronounced in creation without the intervention of any creature. The second fiat was pronounced in redemption, and I wanted the intervention of the creature, and I chose my mamma as fulfillment of the second fiat. Now, in fulfillment, I want to pronounce the third fiat, and I want to pronounce it through you, Louisa. I have chosen you for the fulfillment of the third fiat. This third fiat shall bring to completion the glory and the honor of the fiat of creation, and shall be confirmation and development of the fruits of the fiat of redemption. These three fiats shall veil the most holy trinity upon earth, and I shall have the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven. These three fiats shall be inseparable. One shall be life of the other. They shall be one and triune, but distinct among themselves. My love wants it. My glory demands it. Having unleashed the first two fiats from the womb of my creative power, it wants to unleash the third fiat, for my love can no longer contain it. And this in order to complete the work that came out of me. Otherwise the work of creation and of redemption would remain incomplete. On hearing this, I remained not only overwhelmed, but as though stunned. And I said to myself, Is all this possible? There are so many. And if it is true that he has chosen me, it seems to me that this is one of the usual follies of Jesus. And then what could I do or say from within a bed, half crippled and inept as I am? Could I keep up with the multiplicity? and infinity of the fiat of creation and of redemption? My fiat being similar to the other two fiats, I must run together with them, multiply myself with them, do the good that they do, braid myself with them. Jesus, think of what you are doing. I am not for this much. But who can say all the nonsense I spoke? Now my sweet Jesus came back and told me, My daughter, calm yourself. I choose whomever I please. Know, however, that I begin all of my works between myself and one single creature, and then they are diffused. In fact, who was the first spectator of the fiat of my creation? Adam, and then Eve. It surely wasn't a multitude of people. 
Only after years and years did crowds and multitudes of people become spectators of it. And in the second fiat, my mamma was the only spectator. Not even St. Joseph knew anything. And my mamma found herself more than in your condition. The greatness of the creative force of my work, which she felt within herself, was such that confounded. She did not feel the strength to breathe a word to anyone. And if St. Joseph then knew it, it was because I manifested it to him. So this fiat germinated like seed inside her virginal womb. The ear of grain was formed in order to multiply it, and then it came out to daylight. But who were the spectators? Very few. And in the room of Nazareth, the only spectators were my dear mamma and St. Joseph. Then, when my most holy humanity grew up, I went out and I made myself known, but not to all. Then it diffused more, and it shall still diffuse. So it shall be for the third fiat. It shall germinate in you. The ear of grain shall form. Only the priest shall have knowledge of it. Then a few souls. And then it shall diffuse. It shall diffuse and shall do the same course as creation and redemption. The more crushed you feel, the more the ear of the third fiat grows in you and is fecundated. Therefore be attentive and faithful. Volume 12, March 8, 1921 The Virgin, with her love, called the Word to incarnate himself in her womb. Louisa, with her love, and by fusing herself in the Divine Will, calls the Divine Will to have life on earth within her. While I was praying, I was fusing all of myself in the Divine Will, and my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior, and throwing his arm around my neck told me, My daughter, my mamma, with her love, with her prayers, and with her annihilation, called me from heaven to earth to incarnate myself in her womb. You, with your love, and with the continuous dissolving of yourself in my volition, shall call my will to have life on earth within you, and then you shall give me life in other creatures. Know, however, that as my mamma called me from heaven to earth into her womb, since what she did was a unique act which shall never be repeated again, I enriched her with all graces. I endowed her with so much love as to make her surpass the love of all creatures united together. I gave her primacy in the privileges, in the glory, in everything. I could say that the whole of the Eternal One reduced himself to one single point and poured himself upon her in torrents, in immense seas, so much so that all remained below her. As you call my will into yourself, this too is a unique act. Therefore, for the decorum of my will which must dwell in you, I must pour so much grace, so much love, as to make you surpass all other creatures. And since my will has supremacy over everything, it is eternal, immense, infinite. There where the life of my will must have its beginning and completion, I must communicate to her, endow her with, enrich her with the same qualities of my will giving her supremacy over everything. My eternal volition shall take the past, the present, and the future. It shall reduce them to one single point, and it shall pour it into you. My will is eternal and wants to have life there where it finds eternity. It is immense and wants life in the immensity. It is infinite and wants to find infinity. How can I find all this if I do not pour it in you before? 
On hearing this, I was frightened and terrified. And if I wrote this, it is because obedience imposed itself. And I said, Jesus, what are you saying? You really want to confound me and humiliate me to the dust. I feel that I cannot even tolerate what you are saying. I feel a terror that frightens the whole of me. And he added, What I say to you shall serve me. It is necessary to the sanctity and dignity of my will. I do not lower myself to dwelling there where I do not find the things that belong to me. You shall be nothing other than the depository of a good so great, which you must be jealous of keeping. Therefore, pluck up courage, and do not fear. You have reached the end of The Prodigies of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Volumes 8 through 12. Fiat 